Hello, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Trombley. It is time for our math lesson, and we are going to be looking at unit two, lesson number six today, equivalent decimal values. So you need your math packet, you need a pencil, um, and you're gonna wanna open up your chapter two math packet, sorry, unit two math packet, up to page nine, and we're, we had the rest of lesson five above this, so as you look down, it should say lesson number six, equivalent decimal values. All right, remember, if you write what I write, and if you have questions, you can kind of jot them down off to the side, maybe on a sticky note or something and bring them to class with you, or you could send me a message through Schoology. That would be fine. Okay, you can apply what you learned about equivalent fractions, fractions that represent the same value, to help you understand equivalent decimals. So kind of a blast from the past right here, I know, but 7 tenths is equal to 71 hundredths because, I can multiply 7 by 10 to get 70, and 10 times 10 is 100. So we learned that if I can multiply the top and bottom by the same digit, that I get an equivalent fraction. So the multiplier here is 10. Second one here, I have 70 over 100. I'm an equal sign here equals 700 over 1,000. Well, 70, if I multiply 70 by 10, I do get 700. That pattern that we saw before was the seven times one is seven with the two zeros. And here, if I take one times one, right, we get the one, and then we have our zeros, our one, two, three zeros. So the multiplier here would also be 10. Those are equivalent because I can multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. And last one here, I have seven tenths equals 700 over a thousand. Here, seven times 100 is 700, and 10 times 100 is 1,000. So the multiplier here is 1,000. So hopefully we are in agreement that these are equivalent, those are equivalent, those are equivalent. Well, equivalent decimals are decimals that represent the same value. And I ask you to write a decimal for the shaded portion of each shape. So not only can you have equivalent fractions, fractions that look different but they have the same value, that same applies for decimals. So what I want us to do is I want us to write a decimal value for the shaded portion of each of these shapes here. And what I'm hoping you're seeing right now, I'm hoping that you're noticing that the hole is the same size and I'm hoping that you're seeing that the same amount of each is shaded. So right off the bat, I know that these two shapes both have the same amount of shaded part. The fraction that I would write for this, and I know we're supposed to write a decimal, we'll get there in a second, but if I asked you to write a fraction for this, we would say, okay, well, four pieces are shaded out of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I would say four tenths of this is shaded. And remember that as a decimal, we would write 0.4. So the decimal of the shaded portion here would be 0.4 because that's 4 tenths. Now in this one here that has the same amount shaded, this is broken up into smaller pieces though. So I see that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is a 10 by 10 grid here. That means that there are 10 times 10, 100 little pieces in the hole. And I want to know how many of these are shaded. 10, 20, 30, 40 out of 100 are shaded. So 40 hundredths would be written as 0 0.40. So the decimal for the shaded portion of this shape would be 0 0.40. Now what this means here is that 0 0.4 and 0 0.40 are equivalent. So here I'm going to write 0 0.4 equals 0 0.40. You might be thinking, well, how can that be? Well, up here, I have 4 tenths, and we know that that is equal to 41 hundredths, right? Your multiplier is 10. 4 times 10 is 40. 10 times 10 is 100. So we know those are equivalent. These decimals are the equivalents of the fraction. So like 4 tenths, that means the same thing as that. 40 hundredths means the same thing as that. So these two decimals here are equivalent as well because all I did was I multiplied this by 10 to get the second one. And if you think about it up here, 7 tenths would be 0 0.7. 
70 hundredths would be 0 0.70. 7 tenths and 70 hundredths are equivalent. And it's, you have the same multiplier if you look at them as a fraction. There's other things that we'll go into when we talk more about powers of 10 as we can continue along in this unit and the next. But for now, just kind of understanding that 7 tenths and 71 hundredths are equivalent. I can get from 7 tenths to 71 hundredths by multiplying them each by 10. That makes those equivalent. Okay, um, same thing here. 70 hundredths would look like this. 700 thousandths would look like this. Those decimals are equivalent. 7 tenths and 700 thousandths. Those are equivalent. So what I'm hoping you're starting to see is that I do have in all of these, I have the same digit in the tenths place. And beyond the tenths place, all we have is either nothing or zeros. And I'm hoping that you're seeing that these zeros right here aren't really changing the value. It's almost like 0 0.7 is the simplest form instead of having to include those extra zeros. So this is just like simplifying 700 thousandths. All right, so our job is basically going to be to pick the one decimal that doesn't match the other, that doesn't have the same value. So turn your page, and we're just going to move right into some practice here. It says, circle the value that is not equivalent. That means that three of these are going to be equivalent, and three of them are not, okay? So I want you to kind of picture this, and I think if we picture this as a fraction, it will help. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna write 3 tenths as a fraction. So this would be 3 tenths. This would be 30 hundredths. This would be 3, and that 3 is in the hundredths place. And this would be 300 thousandths. Oops, sorry. So now we have to figure out, okay, which one of those is not equivalent to the rest? And basically, I think the easiest way to do that would be if they were all out of the same thing. Wouldn't you agree? Meaning, if the denominators matched, it would be really easy to see which one didn't belong. So I see here, the largest denominator I have is a thousand. What can I multiply 10 by to get a thousand? What can I multiply 10 by that would give me two more zeros? That would be 100. So if I take 3 times 100 and 10 times 100, 3 times 100 is 300. 10 times 100, we just said, is 1,000. So that means that 3 tenths is the same as 300 thousandths. For this one, if I want my denominator to be 1,000, I can multiply 100 by 10. That means I need to multiply 30 by 10. So 100 times 10 is 1,000. And 30 times 10, 3 times 1 is 3, and I put my 0, is 300 thousandths. Now, I'm guessing that you're going to see at this point, okay, this one is 300 thousandths, this one is 300 thousandths, this one is 300 thousandths. It has to be this one. And I can prove it to you. If I wanted to make this 1,000 so that my denominator was the same for every single one, I would have to multiply 100 by 10 to get 1,000. That means I need to multiply 3 by 10. So this would become 30 thousandths. And now we can see all of the rest of them are equal to 300 thousandths, not 30. So this right here is the one that doesn't belong. A simpler way to do that, because I don't know about you, but I don't really want to have to multiply these out every single time. When you multiply by 10, I'm hoping that you're seeing that the pattern is we're just adding these, these zeros, right? And when we're making things equivalent, we're not changing the value when we put those zeros. So example being, if 3 tenths is the same as 300 thousandths, 300 thousandths would look like this, right? So I just put those zeros there. I didn't change the value of anything. Right here, if I wanted this to be thousandths instead, 30 hundredths would be the same as 300 thousandths. For this one here, three hundredths would be the same as 30 thousandths. And here, I don't need to do anything because it's already the thousandths place. 
So the moral of this lengthy story, and we won't do this for every single one, my suggestion is when you're looking at the values you wanna compare, look at the one that has the, like, how, the lowest place value, I would say, because the thousands would be the lowest. And make sure you fill in zero so that all of them are in the thousands place. Then you can say, okay, well, this is 300 thousands, this is 300 thousands, this is 300 thousands, and that's only 30. That way you're making them all thousands. So hopefully it'll be more clear in example B. And we've got four more to go. If you're like, I don't understand what you're talking about, it's okay, there's four more examples here, okay? So here's what I mean. I wanna figure out which of these does not belong so I look and I see this has one digit to the right of the decimal, this has two, this has two, and this has three. I want to rewrite all of these so it has three places to the right of the decimal point without changing the value. And all I have to do without changing the value is I can put zeros there because we already saw this pattern up here. We're not changing the value when we add zeros when it's to the right of that decimal point there after the digit. So I just added two zeros here. So now I have thousands and thousands. I would need to add one zero here so that I would have three places to the right and one zero here so I have three places to the right. So now when I look at this, here I see 200 thousands, 20 thousands, 200 thousands, and 200 thousands. So 20 thousands is the one that's different. All of the rest of these, and I'll rewrite it for one, this would mean 200 over 1,000, right? Because the zero's in the thousands place. So is that, and so is that. This one is only 20 thousandths, which is different than the rest. Okay, look at letter C. I see that when I'm looking at these, that I do have the thousands place, so I'm gonna rewrite all of these. Well, actually, I see a fourth place here one, two, three, four digits to the right. So I'm gonna make sure that I have four places to the right in all of these. One, two, three, I need a fourth one. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna put my zeros in so that all of them have four places to the right. And now we can compare. And these are 10 thousandths. <laughs> this would mean that I have 700 over 10,000. And look at this one, same thing, 700 over 10,000. This right here would be 7,000 over 10,000. And here again, I have 700 over 10,000. So our denominators match, all of our numerators don't match, right? So which one is not matching? Oh, sorry, I forgot to put my put an extra zero in there. I'm like, wait a minute, this is still 700 over 10,000. So hopefully you can just erase yours instead of making a big scribbled out blob. This 7,000 over 10,000, that's the one that doesn't match. I right, take a look at letter D. I see three places, three places, two places, four places to the right of the decimal point. So I'm gonna rewrite all of these so that they have four places to the right of the decimal point. So this one has one, two, three. I'm gonna put that fourth zero. One, two, three, put that fourth zero. One, two, I need to add two zeros. Now in looking at these numbers, it's much easier to compare. Here I see nine, zero, one, zero. This is 9,100 ten thousands, 9,100 ten thousands, 9,100 ten thousands. This is only 9,010 ten thousands. So that one does not match. All right, last but not least, we do have a number in the ones place and they match for all of them. That's great. So let's take a look at to the right of the decimal point. I have three digits to the right and it looks like the rest of these have less than that. So I'm gonna rewrite each of these so they all have three digits to the right of the decimal point. That's the same as writing them all out of a thousand like we did up here. So I need to add two zeros here so that there are one, two, three digits to the right. I need one zero here, so there's three digits to the right, and one zero here, so that there's three digits to the right. Now you can see that we have 800 thousandths, 800 thousandths, 800 thousandths, and this, we only have 80 thousandths. So this one does not match. So basically, as you're trying to figure out which one of these is not equivalent, 
look for how many places to the right of the decimal point, like the, the largest number of digits, and rewrite all of them so that they have the same amount of digits much easier to compare them that way and that's the same thing as rewriting them with a common denominator when we were comparing fractions all right you are done for the day with your lesson now you're going to want to get your whiteboard materials and you'll do the practice that goes along with this talk to you soon